my question stems from the first question that was asked and as you said it is about how intense your longing is now uh, i mean my problem is say a lack of discipline in lot of things including say i'm not able to maintain the discipline of doing my shambhavi regularly and somewhere i think it is because of course uh, if i long for it long for something sincerely then the discipline would come about so is longing always a is it related to a certain situation and time it comes with a situation or time or can something be done to intensify the longing itself how long has it been since you felt hungry well, that's a few hours really hungry when did you feel last because most people never allow themselves to feel hungry they eating throughout the day How long has it been when you felt really, really hungry? Once in a while, yes. Tell me how long ago. Really, really hungry. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, of course, uh, hunger happens and then we eat. But I don't know when it was so hungry that I. <laughs> okay, it's been a long time. Then. Yes, yes. Because hunger is not an experience that you forget. It's intense. So if you fasted. for three days, four days, then you will use everything. One extra finger movement you won't make, you will use everything carefully. You will say only what you want to say. You will not say da 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 speak like this. You will go carefully because now energies are limited and you know you have to be in a certain way. No training is needed, simply because you're hungry, you become quiet, you become like this. Similarly, if the longing for something is just like hunger, if you're longing strong enough, everything will fall into place by itself. You don't have to bring discipline into your life, you don't have to search for a guru, nothing. Everything will fall into line by itself, if you long strong enough. So the problem is there is no longing because there is too much snacking. You know? <laughs> People who are snacking all the time, they don't feel hunger. Because you are snacking, snacking means right now, you are trying to satisfy your longing. Human longing is to expand boundlessly, but you are satisfying your longing with shopping, by watching a cricket match, by watching a cinema, by talking to somebody, by reading something, by distracting yourself with a million other things. So just spend a few days. nothing simply you paint your room white okay comfortable chair but eyes open no sleeping alert and open no reading no thinking no creating new philosophy nothing simply sitting you will see initially you may feel like you're going crazy but after some time you see clearly what is this life longing for becomes 100% clear to you 100% clear to you, there will be no doubt about that. So this is the reason why we create spaces. An ashram exists so that you come and make use of it for your sadhana, do you understand? That you come, you invest a certain amount of time in a year, at least a week or two weeks, just for this one, for nothing else. Just… if you feel this being is worthwhile, if you feel this being deserves at least that much attention, you must give it at least a couple of weeks in a year. Fifty weeks for you, fifty weeks for the world, two weeks for you, just for you. Not for your body, not for your mind, not for entertainment, not for your family, just for you. You need to understand this, the best thing, the foremost thing and the most beautiful thing that you can offer to people around you is you are an evolved human being. Yes or no? Not your money, not your wealth, not your rubbish, not your work which is going to make the difference. That being with you is a wonderful experience for people around you, your family, the people that you work with, your friends, everybody aspire to be with you because it's a wonderful experience to be with you. This is the best thing that you can ever do to any, any human being around you. That's all they aspire for, isn't it? 
But now the problem is, you are looking for that wonderful person. Oh, I met this wonderful person, why the hell are you not that wonderful person? Because you never paid any attention to this. You think something that's happening around you is more important than what is this. No, no, no. The quality of your life is essentially determined by the quality of what this is. How this is, that's how it'll be, wherever we put you. Whether we put you in heaven or hell, the experience and the quality of your life is determined by how this is, not how the situation is. You must spend some time without snacking, then you will know what is hunger. Once you are sufficiently hungry, then you know the value of food, isn't it? Otherwise you will not know the value of food, what it means. Just don't eat for twenty-four hours and then when somebody serves a meal, don't gobble it immediately. Just sit there, wait for two minutes. Just look at the food, see what it means to you. It's life sitting out there in the plate, not some rubbish, not some material, not some stuff. It's life, your life sitting out there in the plate, isn't it? If you see food like this experientially, the way you handle the food, will it change or no? Yes? That's all. So if you create just one week where you simply… you don't worry, if you come, we will fix it, how to fix it for you <laughs> If you fix it in a certain way and then you see, Wanting to know what this is will become the prime importance in your life. Once there is longing, everything else will align itself. The heaven and hell will work for you. They will start working for you if the longing is big enough. Nobody can stop it, everything will align with you. That is the nature of the universe. If this one thing, which is the source of creation, gets fired up, the creation will get aligned behind you, it will not be against you. The simplest and the most fundamental thing that you can do in your life is that your life always. You don't have to be in any particular way, you just have to be alive. Everything else, including the body and the mind, are accessories to life. Accessories are added to life to facilitate certain things, not to overshadow life. We add accessories to facilitate, to add on and enhance, not to overshadow completely, not to occupy life but to enhance life. If you know this and know this every moment of your life, that everything that you possess, including your body and your mind, are accessories, they are here only to enhance this life, not to overshadow this life. Oh, let me see how you get depressed. <laughs> you must get spot on with life, this is all you have to do. What is you and what is not you, must be distinction. So whatever is not you, when you hold it, you must hold it in a certain way. Of course, depending on the nature of what it is, if it's a flower, we hold it one way. If it's a vessel, we hold it another way. If it's a pen, we hold it another way. Can you employ the same grip on everything? It's different depending upon the nature of what it is. But every kind of grip that you use, if you notice how you hold anything for that matter, there is always this dimension that you can loosen the grip and let it be. Suppose you hold something and you cannot loosen the grip, okay, you are heading for the stuff. So just look at these things, how many things in your life are such that you held it and now you can't loosen the grip. 
these two months, this is all you need to do, consciously. Don't tell anybody, they will all fight you. They think you're going to leave them and go away, they think you're going to take sannyas, they think something else and something else. No, within yourself, nothing need to be done outside. Within yourself, how are you holding it? For this, a simple thing is like this. Tomorrow morning you're going to die. I'm very generous, I'm giving you twenty-four hours. Yes, the nature of life is such, it never guarantees twenty-four hours for you. But I'm giving you twenty-four hours. Tomorrow morning you're going to die. Do what you want, you're going to loosen the grip on everything, isn't it? Do whatever you want, whichever way you're going to loosen the grip on anything. Have you seen in the Hindi movies, <laughs> no? <laughs> Have you not seen the movies? So <laughs> the loosen the grip. It's gone. <laughs> loosen the grip on your body, loosen the grip on your mind, your thought, your emotion, just loosen the grip a little bit. When you're alive, if you loosen the grip, you will become exuberant. When you're dying, That'll anyway happen, the last scene <laughs> So these two months, you must make use of it to loosen the grip on everything. <laughs> I… I'm a hard nut, so I learnt it in my own way. But these days, I'm seeing all the golf trainers are telling their… Uh, whatever, the trainees, those who want to learn, those who have been playing for many years also, they're teaching them, you must hold it loose, you know, you should not hold it tight. Normally when you want to hit something, you want to hold it tight, but you must hold it loose. This will happen to you if you have never ridden on a bicycle, for the first time you sit on it, Ah, when you loosen it, it rides well, isn't it? Just loosen it, you will see you will ride the life well, <laughs> too tight. <laughs> Have you seen the new cycle rider? It doesn't go anywhere <laughs> So you got to loosen the grip. Shani, Vedai to Vimam, Sam Sara Pasham, Chaturo Hunking to Tantra Jale Patam, Nashatnom Yaham Kartum Yakim of Ilmahyam, Vidhani Tantra Shatadwada Shani, Vedai to Vimam.